book your driving lesson now at dla-driving.co.uk. Hello and welcome to Oh When The Town. I'm Lou Gregory and here's what's coming up today. Luton crash to their first league defeat of the season after Preston take their main chance at Kenilworth Road. A brilliant strike from Brad Potts, but it leaves Luton winless this season. Two home games, only one point, only one goal this whole season so far in the league. Today, we're going to discuss that Preston game in a little bit more detail. And instead of a player focus today, we asked you on social media, is it too early for this to be a poor start to the season? Or can you look at it after the four games we've had in all competitions and just say some things just aren't clicking for us at the moment? We'll be discussing that today. I'm joined by Dave and Batara. Evening, lads. Evening. Um, I I think the best way to describe Saturday was just a little bit disappointing, wasn't it? Who's getting a phone call? What brilliant start to the program? Yeah, yeah, that's me. No worries. What it is disappointing at the weekend, weren't it? Very, very much so. I genuinely thought we'd go there and we'd take the game to Preston and get a couple of goals and we didn't we didn't get we didn't get one goal as we all know and I think that's the frustrating part of it for me I think it's there but we're just not firing on all cylinders yet after the performance at Burnley which was so positive and you looked at it and you thought maybe we could have been one or two nil up in that first or two nil up in that first half um, and then we get pegged back but defend really well and I think that gave me a lot of confidence going into Saturday and then we had the Wednesday night Newport or Tuesday night Newport game which well, look, let's be you, honest. Let's, you can forget about that, really. I mean, if you set yourself up like that for Newport, you know, they had three shots on target and they all went in. Yeah. Uh, you set five up front or whatever at one point, you know. Oh, that's the same thing happened Saturday, though, wasn't it, as yeah. well? I think it was one shot on target they had as well. Preston scored one goal. So, but look, it's, it is early days. Why is this happening at the moment, though? What, what's, what is not, the, not a problem? I'm not saying there's a problem, but what's not going for us? At the moment. Well, we're not scoring. We're not creating enough chances that are golden chances for our strikers to score. You know, we're just not doing it. I mean, at Burnley, we created lots. Um, Preston, we created some. But we're not we're not converting those glorious chances. Well, like Nick says here in the free world review, played like strangers. And really, that is it. They do look like strangers. They look like they've not played together. Well, on Saturday, should I say. They look like they haven't played together. Like, Ever. Some other three word of you say Meg says very frustrating performance. Jester pressure mounting quickly. Richards has been figured out. Brad says change the system. Uh, Justin says powder puff attack. Um, Terry says wasted my afternoon. But on just can we just say to Terry, you never waste your afternoon going to Kennel yeah. Road ever. It's always supporting your team. Um, looking at some of these three word of views though. Brad says change the system. It's the system that's kind of worked for us over the last year, isn't it? That it's like, do you go and change that now? Or is it just stick with what we're doing and it will come good? Stick with what you're doing. I mean, you can't tell anything from the first three games. Stick to what you're doing. If it doesn't work after six, seven games, I know people say then it might be a bit too late then. But look, you've got to trust. I mean, we always say it, don't we? Everyone always says the same thing. Trust the management, trust the coaching, trust everything. So look, just trusting what we're doing, it'll come good. We've got some good players there. We know what we've got. I think so it's only a matter of time. Well, I agree with you. I think at some point that our luck will change a bit. We'll we'll get a goal or two. Just think back to when we won League One. Our start that season wasn't brilliant. Um, you know, so and look and I said this last week and I'll say it again if I need to, look what happened to Forest at the beginning of last season, look where mm-hmm. they are now. So once we start scoring and getting the goals in and getting a couple of wins under our belt, people will relax more. And it's probably more us supporters getting more wound up than anything else. You know, give it time. Yeah, if if it's still like this at Christmas, then you can panic. I think it's more the fact that we haven't scored a goal. Well, one goal. Well, one sorry, goal. yeah. Well, sorry, one goal, yeah. But obviously two games at home, we haven't scored a goal. But, well, oh, it's know, frustration. And I think no, it's more it's against I two teams <laughs> that... I know we have no right to expect to score against anyone. Yeah, and yeah. that's the problem that we always find with, you know, teams like Luton, blah, blah, blah. But you look at 
home fixtures to Birmingham and Preston and us as fans are probably sat there going, this is, these winnable. are two games we expect to win. They're winnable. But, yeah, but then maybe win. that's just a reality check to us as fans going, we yeah. think we should be yeah, beating yeah, Birmingham and Preston at home. Of course it is. It's, it's got to be a reality check. I mean, we can't, we have no given right to go into a game. I mean, we've said it about the opposition fans so many times when they disrespect us, like say teams like Luton, whatever else, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you are only going to get what you deserve. And we have deserved nothing from these two games, realistically. I mean, Birmingham, yeah, I think we were a better side than them, but we weren't great. But Preston, we were nowhere near the levels. Yeah. People sit there and go, oh, yeah, but look at the stats. We've had 18 shots, 18 wasted shots, 18 shots, absolutely, absolutely nothing. But so look, we have no given right. It's like we said on Saturday about the whole Man United, I'm sure you were there, Man United, Brentford. What right do Man United fans have sitting there going, oh, fucking Brentford, Brentford this, Brentford that. Why aren't we beating teams like Brentford? They, they were the same. We heard it in the pub. Yeah, yeah. For example. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. come on, man. It's, I you think, have no right. I generally think luck will change, though. I generally can't see this team not performing. Now, you know, mm-hmm. maybe it's going to be a slow burner and we'll, we'll pick it up towards, you know, the mid to the end of the season. But I don't expect us to be in trouble. I expect us to be pushing forward. And I reckon, you know, once... Eddie Bayo gets his head on it and scores a couple, and, and Morris scores or mm-hmm. what else. I think it, I think it'll move on. I mean, we've got quality players, quality players. They can't be all bad, surely. And let's get a full strength as well. Let's get a fully fit team, and then see where we are then. Because at, the, at the moment, we are so disjointed with injuries. I know people are going to say, "Yeah, but they're players that will in the starting eleven. But we know there's other players that can come in. Like your Dow Ease, yeah, obviously Berry's, yeah. I think he's injured again now as well. Obviously Cornick was missing the other day as well. I mean, we can keep going through the list of people, or players, should I say, but it is what it is at the moment, and we'll crack on. Just get on with it, and it will happen. It's Look, we go and beat Bristol City and Swansea. That's a, that's a fantastic start to the season, isn't 100%, it? 100%, yeah. So, look, here we go. You're one that always says every year you're like, give it 10 games, yeah. judge them after 10 games. Yeah, 100%. You've got to give it at least, I'd say, at least eight games. Between eight and twelve games, and you'll see where you're at. You'll know the level that we, what you're competing at this season. We're well, going to tell nothing. Sorry, you can't tell nothing from the first few five games. Nothing. We're well, going into the game. We made two changes from Burnley. Burke and Morris come in for Osho and Corner. Cornick missing out, which uh, Nathan Jones said was due to injury. Pulled up on Friday. Um, also mentioned it could have been a result of playing Newport in the cup, which would be disappointing if so. But injury just seems to be still a massive thing for us this season already, and mm-hmm. it just. I don't know, does, does it worry you, the amount of injuries that we've already got? Yeah. It always, it always worries, me, worries me when we get injuries, because what is going on in training? Is he working too hard or what? Because, well, look, I know they've got to be fit and they've got to be athletes, but are these players that are going to constantly break down? It would be injuries? interesting to know if training does actually influence mm-hmm. a player's like injury, because they're... Working with like elite professionals, like oh, yeah, of course. all this, these first team staff are elite professionals. They know what they're doing. So it makes me think like, is it just, un- are we just unlucky with injuries? Well, you never know when, when you're going to pull up with a muscle strain or, you know, you get clipped by something and it puts you off balance. You twist your know, knee or ankle. So no, yeah, we're unlucky. I think, I don't think anyone pushes it so hard in training that it's going to cause them too much grief. Cause if they saw that happening, they'd pull them up surely. You know, and I know, I know in training you need to be match ready, mm-hmm. but you're not going to go out there and cause your fellow athletes harm, are you? Well, no, in that I mean, way? surely like the only way to have match readiness or match sharpness is to actually play matches. Well, I get that, but I just feel that... You I know, do think training would be intense though. It, yeah, would, it would replicate. Intense. It's to get your fitness there and, and your levels ready and, and plans ready. Um like you say, I think we're more professional than we've ever been in that department, ever. Um, you've only got to think back to the interview you had with uh, Lee, who said, you know, when they used to be at Eli Way, they trained in a park. Yeah. Now they're training on proper pitches. So it, it, back in the day, I would have said, bloody hell, yeah, they could be damaging themselves playing on that sort of thing. But they've got enough staff and they've got brilliant training ground to cope. So I think we've been pretty unlucky. Um, yeah. into the game then it, it, I managed to I was working but I managed to catch the first like 39 <laughs> minutes on iFollow and it just wasn't sorry man did you manage to do that was you in 
different country. I was in a different country, mate. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Sorry. Thanks for that. Thanks for knowing. But um, no, it was it, it. I just there wasn't a stage where I felt like we were going to score. Is that fair? Is that a fair yes, statement yeah, of the yeah, game of the weekend? Total fair assessment. In that first half, it just felt like nothing was going for us. It felt like the flick-ons weren't you weren't going to our uh, second balls were never going to us. And it's it's kind of like one of the three word reviews said about playing as strangers or whatever. But it yeah. did kind of feel like we're lacking that understanding in the attacking areas. Yeah, I think that was the frustrating bit of it. Um, I don't recall. I mean, we had quite a few. Uh, sorties towards the goal basically but I don't remember going wow we could have scored three or four today not at that point no. not in the first half the first half for me was just was fr- frustrating really frustrating because there was not any clear c- open opportunities was there really but why is why do you reckon that is I can't I can't explain it I literally can't explain it is it because I don't know Adi Bayo is really not done brilliantly for me this season so far Um He's been a bit off sorts. Um, he looks a bit fragile, hasn't he? Like, just, I don't think yeah. he's been a bit off. I think you know he just needs to pick it up again. And and I think one goal goes in, he'll get the, he'll get it back. But yeah, it just I just I agree with you. I didn't feel we we're going to score. I might have even texted you that at one point. Yeah, and you know. Yeah, to be fair, I think as soon as they went one nil up, I don't know what minute was it. Was it fifty something minute, sixtieth minute, whatever minute it was? Anyway, but as soon as they scored, I thought from then I had no confidence. Well, we won nil down at half time or not? I can't even remember. No, it's oh no, it was yeah, no, it was before our first half, wasn't it? Yeah, so it was at the Kenner event, so yeah. Oh shit, yeah, it makes sense. So I that's, mean, that's how much. Well, let's talk about the goal because it wasn't. Brain. It was an unreal finish. Um, pots at the far post, scissor volley into the, well, yeah. just past Horvath. But you said it was poor defending, Patara. So yeah, don't right. Don't let me take it away from him. It was a great, great finish. But how are you getting your leg that high and having the time to do that? How are you? I don't, under, I don't understand how there's no one with him. I think, is it Amari Bell maybe? Maybe got a slight bit of contact on him after he'd strike the ball into the top, top of the net. But where is, where's he defending? The ball was whipped in, no one closed him down. <laughs> He's managed to, like, I don't know, do some like acrobatic kung fu kick in like midair yeah. and score. And it's like, wow. And everyone's going, oh, great finish. But what about the defending? All right, fine. We'll give, uh, you've got to clap it. You've got to applaud it a little bit. But, I mean, at the same time, where's the defence? I would rather lose a game to a goal like that, though. Than we say this. I know, because... Yeah, I don't, and I'd I rather don't not lose the game. Yeah, but if someone says you, you're going to lose 1-0 to Preston on Saturday, you'd rather concede that goal than a goal that was just absolutely, like, shocking. To, like, let's be fair, it's an unreal finish. You got yes, When you look at finish, that goal, you go, fair play. The finish oh, was yeah. unreal. The ball was decent in as well. But at the same time, I don't know, I'm always... <laughs> The first to criticise when it's your team, whether you're playing football for that team or if you're supporting that team, like Luton, where is the defending coming from? I'm sorry, he should not have any right to be doing that, especially at that level. I'm sorry. But that's the thing, right? Tonight against Bristol City, Bristol City could do a ball like that into the box. Their striker could go to do that, could just completely miss it. Or he can make contact and he'll go flying into the stand. It's like yeah, the I technique guess. and the skill to put that in the goal doesn't happen every single game like that just takes one special moment which is why I look at Saturday and I go yeah the result was very disappointing but if it weren't for that one moment of brilliance maybe it is a different game but I get what Batara is saying if it weren't for that one moment of brilliance with no defenders around him or no one shutting him down quick enough you know then you know we'd have reacted a bit more he wouldn't have got up that high to the do only, it the only way yeah. to look at it is right from my point of view I'm sorry but if, he, if there's any defenders within half a yard of him right Trying to stick ahead on that, and he's doing that. You're getting a foul given against him for that because he's got he's got a high boot. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. But all right, maybe I'm being a bit too critical. And it don't, like well, I said, it was a great finish. It really was a great. But finish. But it wasn't just a finish; it was the cross as well to him. You know, yeah, it was. It was but, just, but it disappointing. Disappointing to concede as well. Disappointing to concede. That was their first shot on target, and yeah, it goes and in. Only shot, I believe, wasn't it? Was it only uh, shot on target? Um, only shot on target. Yeah. See what I mean? So, but once they scored, they were, they were setting up not to lose, and I think that that was it. And we couldn't break them down. We literally couldn't break them down. We couldn't create any clear chances. And in the second half, I don't even remember thinking, you know, this is going to change, which is a bit yeah. of a shame. Producer Jack has put on the notes: um, Luton should have had a penalty when Adebayo was dragged to the ground by Brad Potts, but the ref said no. 
I don't remember that one. Was that second half, first half? I assume second well, half. You know what? We should really remember things like that. <laughs> <laughs> they happen, to be fair. Um, Do you remember it, Dave? No, no I, don't so remember. I don't remember. It. I just think I was so disillusioned with the game at that point, maybe. I don't know. But, um, you know, sometimes they're given, aren't they? Maybe, actually, I was thinking, I wish we had VAR for once. Who knows? No, don't you start. <laughs> uh, Nathan brought on Elliot Thorpe for his championship debut. He really impressed me midweek yeah. against yeah. Newport. And he seemed to, like some of the balls he was putting in the box midweek were brilliant. And you're thinking, that's what we need. Well, yeah, I think he did the same when well, he. Came, yeah. I think he did the same when he came on Saturday. Um, I think he impressed it going forward. He's quick. Um, sometimes bundled off the ball a little bit too easy, but apart from that, but he's positive with the ball though. Honestly, I think he's an exciting player, and I think you know he'll do well when he when he gets a longer run. But yeah, he was putting the ball across really well. Some good crosses there. And yeah, Woodrow had a, a, a volley or a half chance at the at the post. But Dif- difficult chance, though, to be fair to him. Yeah. I think the ball came over top. I think if he'd scored that, I think it probably would have been the better finish than Van Persie's a few years back when right. the ball dropped over his head. Yeah, you because know I mean? it was a difficult. It was almost like he had to pivot his whole body and you know what I mean, try and get that, yeah. try and get his leg over it. But all right, whatever. But I think he done well to get contact on it. To be fair to him, but <laughs> I heard people saying that. Like, why is he not trying to head the ball? And it's like. Really? Uh, surely if you try that, you've got to have like a neck that's like 10 foot long because <laughs> of the pace the ball was going at. Mm-hmm. I just think that but to your just one of those chances goes in on Saturday. The whole mood changes in the stadium. The team push on and I, I genuinely think they push on and win. But none of those chances were close to going in. And that's, that's the worst thing. There might have been shots on target, but they weren't, you know, they weren't yeah, sensational. Yeah. Well, go on, sorry. No, it's not you go. I was about to say, do you know what I find quite funny? If we had taken the chance or the two chances that we had that we can recall back on, yeah. if we'd taken those two chances, we'd have sat here going, it was a really good performance, wasn't it, boys? <laughs> I mean, it was a really good performance. But it's just how football works, isn't it? It's just yeah, that's, that's the maddest thing about it. We go, oh, it's very, like, very clever performance, very solid, two chances, bang, here we go again. But and now sitting it's very poor. That's what I was saying earlier. It comes down to one moment of brilliance, which is mm-hmm. enough yeah. to win a football game, which is why I sit there and go, Fair play. We've lost the game. Yes, it's disappointing. Yes, maybe we weren't as good as we know we can be. But that's football, isn't it? But and there's, there's no yeah, need yeah. to overreact and there's no need to panic. I was trying to think of, of positives from the game. Um, and one for me is I think we've got a decent keeper in there now. Yeah. I think, I yeah, think that's yeah, amazing. Of that's good to see. It's good to hear you saying that, Dave, because on Saturday you were distraught on the bus on the way home. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone was quite distraught, but honestly, have you seen Dave? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Well, I had to sit like, halfway like, down the bus just to get away from him. He's <laughs> depressing me that much. Um, some stats and facts thanks to FOTMOB. Uh, producer Jake has put on the running order today. Um, 53% possession for Luton, 18 shots, only two on target to Preston, seven shots and one on target. It was Preston's first win at Kenilworth Road since 1999 when David Moyes was in charge. And Preston are the only team in the championship yet to concede a goal. And uh, they only just scored one. Yeah, two nil nils and a one nil. I mean, yeah. yeah, I see some highlights of them last week. I watched them extended highlights on them, excuse me. <clears throat> and they did miss some sitters and they could have easily scored two or three. I mean, I think the guys that we were speaking to, I think they even said the same thing. So I've seen a few Preston fans saying they played ten times better against mm-hmm. Hull last weekend than they did on Saturday. But they drew with Hull and, and beat yeah, us. Yeah, this is this is it. That's what happens. It's football, I suppose, isn't it? They'd yeah, be looking they'd be looking at us going, How the hell did you get to the playoffs last season on like, playing like that? Mm-hmm. And the answer is we didn't play like that. We played much yeah, better, true. and we will improve. There's no way we're not going to improve, and uh, you can mark that one down if uh, and see see how it is in a <laughs> few we'll months' get relegated time. In the season. No, we're not going to get relegated <laughs> oh, at no, all. We're I'm not. Only joking. Um, we did ask the question on social media: with these first three league games, can you call it a poor start to the season? I know we've kind of already mentioned it, but or is it too early to say? Too early. Yeah. Too early to say. I mean, look. Yeah, probably we should have got a win. Maybe home games. You look, you look at home games, I think three points against... See, it sounds disrespectful, but the teams without the budgets and whatever should we say in the league. And I mean, I'm not saying they haven't got budgets, but you know what I mean, though? Compared to, say, like if it was a Norwich at home or... Uh, see, I probably just sound as bad as everyone else now saying that. <laughs> I'm trying to be respectful about it, but you see what I'm saying, though? Mm-hmm. You, you want to be picking up results against certain teams... Well, you, you know, the, teams, yeah. the teams you feel that you're competing on a level and terms I, with. I yeah. always go on last season as well, right? Teams that we beat in last season at home, I always like to get a result against the season after. And if you don't, I always, I always count the points and go, well, that's a two-point 
two points less than what we picked up last season from that game. But then do you count we the points that we lose last season and pick up this season? Yeah, yeah winning, of course. You know? So we can make it up somewhere else. I'm still happy with it. It's just the point points projection to get to, isn't it? It's just, that's what it is. You know what I think, right, is you look at the league table at the moment. I've got it here. Oh, and it's like... I haven't looked at it. But you look from 19th downwards, you've got Middlesbrough, West Brom, Luton, Coventry, Bristol City and Norwich. Yeah, but if you told me like them that. six teams are going to be in the bottom six in three months' time, you, I would no, said, I'd yeah. say you're lying. I would have said, yeah, it's fine because it's only three games in. <laughs> sure no, that's what I mean, though. In six months' time, that's oh, not going to be... Oh, like, Norwich oh, right. aren't going to be sitting bottom of the league. No. Like, all of these teams uh, are probably looking at their first three games and probably all going, wow, this isn't a good start to the season. But let's be honest, if any of these teams are in that position in two months time something t- drastic yeah, that's, happen. yeah that's different then but I mean three games like we say you can't really look at that at the moment you can't judge I don't look at the you table. just literally can't judge it on three games and I keep saying you know look when we won the league look, look at Forest are Man United going to get relegated this season they're bottom of the hopefully. league right now well, <laughs> we both said hopefully at the same every, time everybody would hope that right if they ended the Premier League season right now and that sent down United West Ham and the other team above them brilliant yeah, well, but, it's not Liverpool, but, is it? but they're not, are they? Southampton. But they're I was not. Say, it's a but song as well. But yeah. we all know they're not going to end up there, right? We all know that they're not going right, to be bottom of the league. And I, I, night, might. No, it's so terrible. I think it's too early to say. Well, we asked you: Is it a poor start to the season, or is it too early to say? David says too early to say. But these first two home games have been very disappointing. It feels so disjointed at the moment and missing intensity and creativity. I'm missing the next two home games, so they'll probably be great. Yeah, you know normally well. how it works. Um, Adam says very poor attack offering nothing scored three goals and two of those have been from centre backs or a wing back over four games with three of them being at home that is a concern well I think we've touched on that already and I think uh, our strikers have been a bit lacklustre and and I I can't even say they've been unfortunate they just haven't been firing on the cylinders that we know they can they can fire on do you reckon Nathan Jones knows his best 11 at the no, moment? No, no, no? I think he's got probably about three or four of them out injured at the moment. So. Mm-hmm. John yeah. says, not too early to say it's a poor start. Too early to say we'll struggle this season. Morris just needs a goal. Change of formation with Thorpe for Potts looks promising. And Adebayo is starting to look his old self after Thorpe came on. Yeah, you see, after Thorpe came on and chucked some good crosses mm-hmm. in, then he's looking for the ball differently, isn't he? He's a bit of energy as well, isn't he, Thorpe? Yeah, very I like good. it. And I, I agree. It's not too early. So you can call it a poor start if you want but you can't judge the rest of the season on those three games. Or if you count the... Uh, is it? Th- we've had three league games, right? Yeah. Wow. Andrew says it's too early, but it'd be nice to see a performance at home that hints at... Com- oh, competence. competence Thank you. Yeah, I nearly said they're completely wrong. Competence. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll raise our game against better opposition because we've been dragged down to Birmingham Preston's level. Oh, that's a bit harsh, but I sort of agree. I mean, look, Birmingham wasn't expecting to win. We, we know that from our guy that we spoke to at Birmingham. Preston, they set out their stall quite early. And once they scored, they were not going to try and lose. They were, they were here. They bagged three points. Yeah. And they were, you know, just, just by the way that they, 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 they managed the game, really. And also, can I just say, right, I've always said this as well. However you need to win a football match, it doesn't matter. And I respect what teams do. Like, people used to moan about Burnley in the Premier League, right? When they used to get results, just, you know doggy defending and whatever else but you know what I appreciate it it is a form of football so, to be fair like like I said Preston on Saturday fair play and they got the points and yeah. I can't say anything other than that they didn't cheat not that I remember anyway but I don't feel like they cheated I don't feel like they oh, shut the game down I feel I like mean, they did what they had to do listen we can't say that we haven't done it ah, of course uh, every team I don't it. care if we win 1-0 and it's scrappy and, and you know we waste a bit of time I don't care as long as we get the three points. Mm-hmm. Ben says we're one point behind what we collected last season based on defeat to Birmingham at home and getting a draw this season. Comparing Burnley away to Fulham away, we got a point. Then today we should have equaled last season three points, but it's not teams like Luton anymore. It's harder for us. Yeah. I think we've been sussed in some areas, haven't we? They come thinking last season uh, we, we could roll these people over and this season they're coming going, do you know what? A bit more respect. No, you know what? Um we have to have a better game plan because they're a strong team. And yeah. you know, I get that. I get that too. It is harder for us. They know who they know who's scoring the goals. They know who to, how to mark them out of the game. Yeah, it's a shame. 
you look at the next five league games, and obviously it starts with Bristol City tonight, Swansea away at the weekend, Sheffield United at home, Cardiff away, Wigan at home. And you do look at them and you think, I know we say this every week, but they're very five very tough fixtures. There's no easy it fixtures. Is, is it, yeah. There's only there's only two easy fixtures in this league, and um, <laughs> no, they're, they're all tough on there. It's, it's a it's a very very competitive division, um, but you'd like to think our home performances will improve. You'd like to think, and you know, there comes a point when you're playing a better team, um, and uh, yeah, we do raise our game against them sort of teams, mm-hmm. don't we? Well, normally. So we asked on social media, why are we struggling to score goals in these first? three league games obviously doing this we're probably going to score four tonight and win four nil which would be brilliant but (laughs) do you think we've got like a set style of play at the moment because I think for me the biggest thing is when I'm watching Luton at the moment I kind of feel I don't know how we're going to score a goal it's kind of like the one at Burnley it was a long throw and it kind of rebounded to Potts and he was there to put it in but it's like I can't think of a way how it's not like we're getting in behind down the line and bombing it across the the goal for a tap in. It's like, how do we score at the moment? Well, we don't, do we? That's the problem. <laughs> how yeah, do we currently. score? Um, I'd like to think that we'd, we'd go down the flanks a bit more sometimes um, and get those crossing. We've got, a, we've got a really big front line. Morris and Adibayo together, oh, yeah, they need a bit more service. It's going to be the hold-up play for me. That's how we're going to score. When, we, when you start scoring, I think that's what we've tried to do in the last couple of games is try and get it to the big men up top get the knockdowns but I think everyone's just off at the moment there's no sort of cohesion there's no balance in and around midfield I'm not saying it, I'm just maybe it's just it's not clicking for us at the moment but I, look, I think we're going to try and play off the big men up top that's what it is that's why there's yeah, two big men not, there. not route one direct oh, I wouldn't be surprised we've done it quite a few times haven't yeah, we? but I don't think that's the way forward I think the way forward would be to play I feel like it worked last season a bit I was like. say, isn't that what last season was the way to score a goal well I think I think we've moved on a bit and well, when it, it, yeah, when it clicks, when we get that, you know, you've got, we've Dave, got players that can play football. What, yeah, no, I understand that. But what do you mean by moved on? Because like I said earlier about the whole uh, Burnley thing in the Premier League, they found a way to win. And if it weren't for them, yeah. or found a way, way to survive, should I but say, it's, current, else? it's currently not working for us, though, is it? No, no, currently, after three games. But have we not discussed this? It's too early at the moment. Why are we struggling to score goals? If you're not giving your centre forwards the right service, they're not going to score. If they have to come out and collect it all the time, they're not going to score from where they are. Um, they're meant to be your main your main guys up front, aren't they? I really hope tomorrow night we score like three group <laughs> well, I, hope, I hope you're right, mate. Oh, like, I, I genuinely hope you're right. Wait. I don't. You say it's about time. service to the strikers. I saw this really interesting stat today on XG that Luton is sixth in the league for the highest XG. Oh, which, the XG thing is all the bollocks. I see. Oh, you say it, that, yeah, yeah. No, but you say that, but for me, that's a stat that kind of makes me feel like we're okay. And that actually we're doing all right. But when, where did this stat come from, though? Yeah, you start using it on match of the day like two or three years ago. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly new stat, a few years now. But, yeah, but what, what is it? What, what, the amount of chance you're creating, is it? The or? probability of scoring the chances you create, I how, think. How do they work I out? I stand they, to be corrected if, someone, if I'm wrong. Can you leave a comment below telling me what XG actually is? But what are they doing? Rolling dice, the amount of chances you have. Like, oh, hang on a minute. This, this one might be on target next week. Because he created, uh, how does it even work? Like, it's, what it's, is this? <laughs> it's basically a way just to look at it and go, we're getting the chances, we're just not converting them at the moment. Which I think for us, they keep saying if your XG is high and if it just stays high, you'll eventually start taking them chances. But what if you don't? Then it's false. But then that comes down to either bad striking luck and yeah, or, bad strikers or whatever, or something like that. But you you should be more worried if you're sat at the bottom of the XG table and what if you down there like a zero point two. What if you scored five goals and a zero point two though? And then and you're laughing saying well we're actually <laughs> probably one of the most potent strike forces in the country. Yeah, or you could look at it and go, Well, they've been lucky to score five goals this season. Ah, uh, you create yeah, you, like, you, you can always manipulate luck, stats. You can always manipulate them to yeah, what you yeah, want I, them to I, be. I don't believe in luck anyway, mate, so I just think that's about nonsense personally. Sorry, I just, I don't know what it is about this XG stat. I, I don't get it. And I really don't like it, I'll be honest. No? I sit all the time coming up and I'm thinking, well, why does it matter what your, your XG is like two or three and theirs is 0.57 or whatever? Because let's face it, 0.57, brilliant. Like, and you've just lost the game 2-1. So it don't really matter, does it? I think it, it goes from us going, Saturday was a really bad performance. But if you looked at I don't think our XG was that mad on Saturday, but say we had a really high one XG on Saturday. I believe on here. But say, go, we had, say we had a really high XG on Saturday, you would look at it and go, 
the chances like we could have scored X amount of goals Saturday, but it just wasn't our day kind of thing. Well, mm. no, you're not should've. getting this. Could have, no. would have, should have. No. I don't know. I, just, I don't know, man. I think I, it's, I don't know if I you like can it. quote any stats you like, but the proof is in the end of it. And you don't see the goals go in, you get disappointed with the performance. That's how Burnley, it Burnley had 73% possession the other week and 12 corners or something like that. And they were shy. Yeah, <laughs> very true. Um, we asked you why we're struggling to score goals this season. John says, buying strikers with a relegation mindset need the psychological uh, psychologist working over time. A bit of luck needs to come our way. Burnley second half, Clark, Clark soft shot instead of passing. Um, can't blame Adebayo for being greedy. He wants a goal. Um, then there was a goal mouse scramble another day, three points. But well, um, It's a bit unfortunate. I don't sort of, you know, relegation mindset. I don't, I don't like that phrase. Um, He's, he's referring, obviously, to the people from Barnsley, and um, they've not cut. They don't want to be relegated. They want to. They want to. But the season before that, sure. they also had playoff mindset. mindset so yeah, it's sure. yeah. I yeah. don't really. I don't really understand that one. But like, I, so. I sort of get what he's saying, but it's not not hundred percent there. I, I, you know, the other bit, he's right. You know, we could have turned it round at the end of the Burnley game. We we still sitting here rubbing our hands together, going, "No, we've been a bit unlucky at home, but we've got a tremendous result away." Simon says you need to rephrase that question. Why are we not creating chances? If we create, we will score. Set pieces yesterday were plenty. Delivery so lazy. Same ball every time. Uh, food and drink for the defenders in this league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't inspiring. Simon, we agree it wasn't inspiring. Coop says Preston played three narrow lines when out of possession and nowhere to pass into. They did a great job at reducing the space. The front yeah. two were too static at times, so we failed to drag them out of position and turn to create gaps. The first goal is always going to be pivotal. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Can't, like can't so you find that. a way to win. Yeah, Preston find a way to win. They've done their job. They got the goal and done their job. So you can't, you've got to respect it. Yeah. George says, I think I tweeted about this in preseason, but wonder if partly it's about the loss of Naismith affecting our build up play. His ball carrying distribution and ability to appear in the attacking areas is hard to replicate. Mm. Too early to say. I, I, I would say no player is irreplaceable. And, um, you know, a few more weeks down the line and we, we're getting goals from everywhere and then we, we won't be thinking of Naismith so mm-hmm. no players irreplaceable Chris says we don't utilise our strengths as in wingers and crossing usually bypass the mid- midfield and start hoofball when we go behind we can't break down teams who sit back and essentially want a point it's the yeah. same as last season we need space and tempo to be good related to this tempo time wasting and poor refereeing stops the momentum well like I said Preston managed the game well on Saturday um, I think they did a little bit you know time wasting I, I, and we don't blame them for that at all, but look at we don't use our strengths as in wingers and crossing. That's what we just said, isn't it? Yeah, and that's yeah. why it's just refreshing to see someone like Elliot Thorpe on who you know yeah. is willing to get out and, and and get a ball into the box. Something a bit. He just wants yeah. to prove himself yeah. as well, Elliot. He really wants to get out, and uh, you know I think he he's going to be a great player. Yeah, yeah. He, to be fair, the footage we see of him before he joined, well, when he was joining, sorry, obviously the development games. I think the thing that we picked out was the fact that when he goes on a run, he likes to keep going on a run. And he will like, eat up so much ground and travel with that ball. And I'll tell you what, it's just it's exciting. And I think we need a player like that, a young, hungry player in that midfield. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Bring him in. I mean, we've got great midfielders there as well, but just some legs in that midfield. So looking ahead to Bristol City tonight, do you start Elliot Thorpe? Maybe not start him, but maybe bring him on if we need him. Woodrow get start? Difficult one, really. I'm, Depends what the injury list is saying. I would say, why hasn't he been starting already? Is he fit enough? Is the manager not thinking he was, as, you know, as as good as we think he should have been? I think it's just more the formation in the midfield at the moment. I don't think right. we're really playing with a number ten at the moment. Are we? I think they're more like the rotation, aren't they, in midfield? Yeah. And Plus, I, I feel like you can't drop that. Freeman and Clark at the moment. They're both been, no, yeah. they've I've been no, amazing. They've been brilliant players. Um, so no, he's not going to start. I hope. Uh, but if he does come on, I hope he scores. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm confident with drugs. He's a clever. He's a clever player. I mean, I watched him Saturday in the second half, and um, even though you don't see him pacing all the players out and doing skill and whatever else, what you do see is you see an intelligent player. Yeah, he's I was say moving he's into pockets of space and little one touch here, laying the ball off, moving defenders around. You'll see, it and he'll like he'll run the lines as well, and he'll move about, and he won't stick to one position. He'll float around behind them, behind the strikers and. Sometimes he's a head of strikers. He's one of them players. So look, maybe he won't start, but it all depends on how we set up formation-wise. That's, that's what it comes down to. But yeah. It's going to be an interesting game. Hopefully, we can just get that first win of the season. Would you take a draw? Yeah, I I'd probably take, would. 
every week away I'd take yeah. not losing I'd like to get a win though wouldn't you no, it'd Dave? be nice to have to a win. win absolutely nice Just, to have a win because I think one win in the next two away games would be, would be great for us it's not going to be easy though is it no no, it's I mean, not going to be easy. To be fair, as long as our XG is above sort of like, you know, one and a half to two, we'll be fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it, boys. But Bristol seem to be more charged up for it this season than they were last season, in my view. And I think it's going to be a tough game. I don't think it's going to be anything easy. But the best thing is, if they play a bit of football, we know we can play it too. Let's just wind up Nigel Pearson. That's, that's what all I want us to do. It's to get at Pearson, wind him up, wind the players up, and the defeat him. Bristol City have also... Well, they lost three in a row, or have they lost? They drew one and lost they two. Drew the other day, didn't they? They're more up for it though. But like, I or think they drew last week. Yeah, them coming into this game now, going Luton at home, we they've lost one, drawn two. We can beat. We them. need to win. They'll be thinking yeah. that as well. They think it's an opportunity. So, hopefully, that just makes for a, a really good game. Um, so yeah, up to Bristol City tomorrow, and then Swansea Saturday can be a good one. Make sure you join us yeah. for our Swansea preview show on Friday morning. And uh, yeah, get us on your way to the Liberty Stadium where we'll be making the long trek up. So it sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for listening today. Get us on YouTube if you haven't already. Oh, when the town, go search us up there. And uh, we'll see you this week. <laughs>